Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be starting the Summerween Readathon that is hosted by Gabby Reads uh, here on BookTube. And for this video, I'm most likely going to vlog the whole readathon in one and put it in one video as a whole. So right now, I'm going to be talking about the TBR and books that I'm going to be reading for this readathon and also going to be talking about what I feel and what I think about the books as I read for the whole week. So to get started I'm going to go through the TBR prompts that they gave us and there are five TBR prompts and the first one is just to read a book in the dark which for this one, I decided I was going to read uh, The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. This one is a translated work. It's translated um, from Spanish to English, and it's just a collection of short horror stories. So this is the one that I decided to read um, like at night in the, in the dark uh, because I just think it would be pretty fun and easy to get through some short stories. And I'm also not going to pressure myself too much into finishing all of these books during this week-long readathon. I'm just, you know, trying to read as much as I can and just enjoy in the little festivity of summer week. So the second prompt is to read a horror or thriller book. And for this one, I decided to pick up The House on Vesper Sands. So this one is... Um, like a murder mystery thriller that's set in London in the 1800s and this one I actually just found randomly uh, one Barnes & Noble trip a long time ago and I haven't seen anybody talk about this at all but it caught my eye when I was shopping and I read the back and it was really intriguing and it's essentially about murder mystery case of missing girls and that presumably have been that are presumably pronounced dead and it's going to follow this inspector that is on the case of these missing girls and this whole like mystery that's going on and it's about a journalist that's trying to write a story about subject matter that is important and relevant to society, especially in London, um, in accordance to women's uh, women and like uh, women's rights, you know, gender norms and all that. So this one just sounded really interesting to me. Uh, so this one I'm hoping to pick up and read. Hopefully, I get to finish it as well, though. I'm not sure. We'll see. And then the third prompt would be to read a book with the night sky on the cover. And I kind of struggled with this one a little bit. And I think I might be cheating a little with this one. But I do have this little poetry book that my friend gave me as a present. And technically it does have like the moon and if you can see here it's like the outline of an owl so i'm i'm going to count it as like the night sky um or just like the night in general because there's a moon and owls are nocturnal as you all know so yeah i'm going to count this <laughs> and i'm going to read this and it even says poem for nighttime so i mean it doesn't get more perfect than that okay so this one has a lot of poetry from the works of like classic uh, authors. So there's like Charlotte Bronte, William Cullen Bryant, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Stephen Crane, Emily Dickinson, John Donne, William Shakespeare, Walt Whitman, William Butler Yeats, and Edgar Allan Poe. So those are a few of the authors that are included in here, and it's just and it's just some of their like poetry works. So this one's going to be also like a quick read. I think it'll just be really fun just to do 
read so like maybe in between the more like heavy horror books that I'm going to be reading and then the next prompt is to next prompt is to read a book with five words or more in the title and for this one I decided to pick up the audiobook for A House with Good Bones by Tikin Fisher um, this one is currently on my like books to read in the year 2024 list that I made uh, earlier this year I made like a video about it about some of the books that I really want to get to this year and I believe this one was on there so I really wanted to try and read it during this readathon and this would also be my first horror T. King Fisher because I typically only read their fantasy because I vibe more so with their fantasy. Um, I tried to read The Hollow Places a while ago and I just couldn't really get into it. I wasn't really liking it. Um, but I do want to try and read at least one of their horror just to see if whether or not it is going to be for me or if I should just stick with their fantasy. Uh, so yeah, so I really wanted to check this one out. So this one's going to be an audiobook that I'll be listening to as I like maybe crochet or like um, do some house chores or something like that. So yeah, I wanted to have that as an option as well. And then the last prompt is to read a book that's set during the summer or set in the summer. And honestly, I don't really have one that I know of that is set in the summer. I I do have Bunny, but I don't know if Bunny is set in the summer or has like kind of summer vibes. Um, so I do have that as an option. And then I know there are a few recent releases like there's that Riley Sager one that's I think set during the summer and there's like a Lucy Foley book also but I don't have those and I don't think I could borrow them from the library right now I'm sure there's going to be like a really long wait so I don't think I'll be able to get my hands on those um so I might just have to like skip this prompt completely or or I don't know either skip it completely or hope that one of the other books that I'm reading is also kind of like summary <laughs> in some way. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be my TBR. So it's going to be essentially phase three physical books and then the audiobook of T. King Fisher's book. So that's going to be what I'm going to read during this week. And I'm really excited, especially because I have been really in the mood to read my physical books. And these two specifically have been on my TBR for the longest time. So I'm glad that I can actually start to make a dent in my, in my physical books and see if I'm actually going to end up liking these. But yeah, but that is pretty much it for now. I will I will come back with some updates once I start reading these books. on my reading so far I started reading uh, the dangers of smoking in bed where's the title <laughs> dangers of smoking in bed and I'm currently on the second story and I just got jump scared um not because of the actual content of the story or because anything scary is happening but because I feel one of the characters has my name 
<laughs> and I was not expecting that. <laughs> and I literally been like, whoa, that's, that looks, I know that person, that looks familiar. And on top of that, some of the things that they're saying about the character, the way they're describing the character, is um, very fitting. <laughs> And it's hitting a little too close to home. And I don't know if I should be flattered or concerned. But yeah, that was just my little update on me reading this for Summerween. Um, so far, I'm really liking it. Uh, it's not like super... It's not like scary horror. Um, it's definitely more like eerie, creepy, like it really makes you like think and it's like, ugh, like kind of horror, <laughs> like it's it's not like shock value, it's, it's more so um, like a conversation starter, essentially, or like um, it makes you like think, so yeah, which I actually appreciate in horror. Um, and sometimes or oftentimes that is like the most horrifying when it's not like jump scare um you know like tension that kind of thing but like the actual horrors of reality and society because it's very much real <laughs> or it's um, um you know real life in the real world so 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 far that that seems to be the theme of these short stories but yeah so I will check back in um, and see if there's any other character with my name. <laughs> I don't know. Update on my Summerween reading. I have finished two books. I finished reading, or I actually finished listening to A House with Good Bones. And honestly, I didn't really care for this one. This one was pretty predictable from the very beginning for me. Like, they, they talk about something and from then i was able to essentially just guess what was going to happen at the end or what like the plot twist was going to be and it turns out i was right and i just i don't know this felt very like lackluster to me it was pretty gross i will say that i think the horror the horror element here was more so in like the gross kind of shock factor and not so much in the like eerie kind of like scared factor like there was like a few moments of like kind of creepiness and stuff but overall i feel like it was definitely more like gross it was aiming more towards gross um but yeah but i just didn't really like it and i this is like the second time that i give seeking fisher's horror specifically like a shot and i i think i've just come to the conclusion that it's just not really meant for me like I, I think i definitely prefer their fantasies more or even like their they're more like cozy their cozy fantasies like sword heart like sword heart to me is like pretty cozy i don't know if other people would agree and i also really liked a nettle nettle and bone that one also had kind of like a coziness at least in my opinion and i think i like those two a lot too because they have kind of like a found family theme to it 
and there's like adventure in those books so it's like fantasy adventure found family like those kind of things and I definitely really enjoyed that of those books so so yeah so I don't think their horror is really meant for me so I'm probably just going to skip out on any horror future horror stuff that they do and I'm just gonna check out their fantasy honestly so but hey at least I gave it a shot and at least I finished another book so that's a win and the other book that I finished reading was the dangers of smoking in bed this was a um, short story collection and it is translated from Spanish to English and I think or I believe majority if not all of the stories pretty much take place in I don't remember if it's like Argentina specifically oh it says three here Buenos Aires so I think that they're all mostly revolve around Buenos Aires um, and I really, I actually really liked all of the short stories. I like, I definitely liked some more than others. I think. Let me see. My favorites were definitely. Oh, I'm so tired. Of it. My favorites were Our Lady of the Quarry, The Cart, Where Are You, Dear Heart, Kids Who Come Back. And I don't remember the lookout. Let me just quickly leaf through it. I don't remember what the lookout was about. Oh, the lookout. Oh, the lookout was good. Yeah, the lookout was good. So the, those ones are, are like my favorite What It feels weird to be favorite because they're so like... They're like not not i mean they're great horror stories but they're not you know good stories <laughs> um so i liked one two three four five i liked five the most those were like the ones that like i remember the, most. the first one too the first one was really creepy i will say i think i, I do kind of like the first one too it's like a six but yeah but this one's really good it do again there's a lot of gross elements to this as well. So if you're not someone who really likes gross horror, um, maybe either be careful with it or maybe just skip out on this because majority of the stories are really gross and they're pretty descriptive. So yeah, but I, I think what I really liked about these horror stories in particular is that they really focus on the horrors of society and they focus on the horrors of like people in general like evil people people with bad intentions people who are trying to like seek revenge um people who have been wronged who are trying to be right um and just and there's just like a lot of like eeriness to it and there's also a lot of um like more like latin kind of not necessarily folklore but just like kind of thinkings and like superstitions and like all that stuff that like i'm more familiar with personally just based on like how i grew up and i i just i these are definitely like my favorite kind of horror like the, the horror that commentates on the realities of society and of people like those are my type favorite type of horrors and that have like a deeper meaning and you can definitely interpret it in multiple ways and they really criticize things that we see in real life like i really like that so i really like this and i know this author mariana enriquez i know they have another i think it's another short i'm not sure if it's short story collection as well if it's an actual like novella a novel but I know they have another book and I'm really interested in checking that out so I probably will in the future because I really liked um, you know every, all of the themes that they talked about and I also really liked the translator because again this was translated from Spanish and it was translated by Megan McDowell 
I really like the way they translate it too. I feel like a lot of times, you know, with translated works, it can be a pretty like hit or miss. It can be some like, something could get lost in translation, which is, you know, obviously people do the best that they can considering how different a lot of languages are. But I, I did really like the way that they, they told the stories here. Like, I could also, like, totally imagine how it would have been written in Spanish if it if I was reading it in Spanish, so I think that was also nice, too. But yeah, so this is another book that I finished. And now I'm going to be checking out the, like, graphic novel A Guest in the House. I think that's what it's called. Um, I had already read a book by this author before. They have, like again another short story collection but like um graphic novel short story collection that's also horror and i read it i think maybe last year or two years ago i'm not sure i really liked it i liked a lot of the stories that they had in there and i like their um art style and their designs so i'm gonna read this and that will be the third read for the summer reading reading vlog Right, hey guys, so I am here to give the final update on my Summer Ween reading vlog. Uh, by the time you are watching this, Summer Ween has left many weeks ago, like a whole month, basically, or more than a month at this point. I don't even know when this video is going up, honestly. Um, but yeah, but I didn't want to like not post this vlog just because I did have quite a lot of footage for it and even though I wasn't able to upload this video like at the same time as when the reading challenge, uh, the readathon was happening and was ending, I still wanted to, to, uh, to post it before, you know, summer is like fully over and just to like show that i did in fact read a few books um so i did finish three books for the readathon which is more than i expected i was hoping to read more books like i didn't get to read the house on vesper sands and i didn't fully finish my little um poem booklet but i will eventually get to those you know in the future uh, maybe in a future vlog, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I'm just here to give like my final updates on what I read. I know the last update was me saying that I was going to read uh, A Guest in the House by E.M. Carroll. And I did in fact finish that. Wait, so did I read three or four? No, I read three. Three, right? Three in total. Three books in total. And I really liked that story uh very different from the last book that i read by them which i'm pretty sure was a, a horror short story collection so the a guest in the house is an actual like full story full novel and i absolutely loved it like that ending i'm not gonna say too much because i feel like you this is one where you really need to just jump into it and honestly i think the less you know about it the better um because there's like a lot of a lot of a lot of things happen that make you really like second guess yourself and be like oh this is definitely happening and they're like wait what and then it's it's there's almost like um a kind of like a mystery element to it aside from the actual horror and like creepiness of the actual visual design drawings so that was really nice i really enjoyed that i'm definitely going to keep an eye out on this author and anything they do in the future because so far i'm really liking everything that they're putting out so yeah so that book i'm going to give that book a four star i don't believe i rated the other two books the so i listened to a house with good bones um i think i'm gonna give that I don't even want to like say what I want to give it because like what I really want to give it is a two star but I feel like that's like almost unfair 
but that's that's just how I feel but I don't I don't know like two two and the three like between there basically and then for dangerous smoking in bed I think I'm gonna give that one a four like a high four I almost kind of want to give it a five just because of how much like it made me really think and how focused it was on the horrors of society specifically and the kind of social commentary social criticism that it brought to the table um but i think i'm just gonna give it like a high four because there were a few stories where i was like a little like mm. uh, so i'm gonna give that a high four like a four four point five and then for a guest in the house i'm gonna give that a four that was a solid four really really liked it definitely recommend if you are in need of like a quick horror story or just a quick like spooky read or anything like that for you know the upcoming spooky months uh but yeah but that is going to be it for this vlog i hope you enjoyed watching it even though it is super late um i'm really glad i was able to start getting into the halloween spirit early on uh, this is my favorite holiday and this is also my favorite season so I'm super excited to hopefully read even more spooky gothic horror books in these upcoming months as well so yeah so thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed uh, like comment subscribe if you want and I will see you guys in the next one bye